So, where does our energy come from? Today, most of it still comes from burning fossil fuels, which are the remnants of organisms that lived long before us. But how did those organisms get their energy? If you trace it back far enough, most of that energy came from photosynthesis, or plants harvesting energy from sunlight. Unfortunately, grass doesn't have outlets for you to plug your iPhone charger into. But what if there were a way to make grass that did? What if we could, your lawn could power your entire house, or a football field could power the whole stadium? What if we could take inspiration from nature to design better solar technology? For too long, problems have been solved by just biologists or just engineers working independently. But more and more often, we're faced with problems that require knowledge from both fields. Or at the very least, we're beginning to recognize that we arrive at better solutions when we look at a problem from both perspectives. Uh, we're beginning to apply our knowledge of biology to improve technology in a wide assortment of fields. And this is what biomimetics is all about. So how can we use biomimetics to power this entire building from the field you see outside the windows behind me? In recent years, through huge breakthroughs in material science and electrical engineering, flexible polymer solar cells have been developed, which are lighter, cheaper, and easier to manufacture than existing silicon-based technology. Most interestingly, though, these polymer solar cells are flexible, allowing them to be shaped into three-dimensional structures. However, these polymer cells suffer from one major drawback, and that's that they're not as efficient as existing solar technology. So we're faced with a dilemma. We have a really promising technology that needs a last little boost to reach its full potential. And this is where the power of biomimetics truly becomes evident, because biological systems are tremendously efficient. Nature is often called the greatest engineer, because living things must constantly optimize their traits in order to continue to survive. And we can take advantage of this optimization to improve the technology that we design. Let's examine the human digestive system for a moment. Inside the small intestine, there are structures called microvilli, which look like little hairs poking out of the intestinal wall. They also look a lot like a field of grass. And what these structures do inside the intestine is they increase the surface area so that we can absorb enough nutrients to continue living while keeping the intestines small enough to fit within our body. If we look inside a plant cell, we'll see the same kind of structure in thylakoid membranes inside the chloroplasts, which allow the plant cells to absorb enough sunlight to produce the energy they need to grow. So why not make three, uh, 3D solar cells that mimic this structure? Until recently, we've been facing a problem of materials. The silicon-based technology just can't be formed into anything other than a flat panel. But now, thanks to those flexible solar cells I mentioned earlier, this is now a possibility. And not only that, but it presents a way to boost the efficiency of these solar cells by collecting more sunlight per square foot than the silicon-based flat panels. And so in this way, we're able to take an advance in you know, one field of technology and apply our knowledge of biology to it to make something better. And the innovations that revolutionize our world come from things that have been around for much longer than us. And there's a huge list that you can look through. Uh, but I wanted to close with this thought. The ideas for uh, tomorrow's biggest innovations won't come from out of the blue. They come from looking at the world around us and realizing that the solutions are here today. So I challenge all of you to look around and find something that can help change our world for tomorrow. Thank you.